Well, it's been a jam-packed day in Olympic women's football. Kathleen McNamee is joining me to try and make sense of all the results that we've seen because some big heavyweights have been in action today, starting with the USA, a 6-1 win over New Zealand, Kathleen. And I mean, if there was any panic left from the loss against Sweden, I suppose that's all gone out the window now. Is this pretty much back to normal and that Sweden result was just a fluke? I think it was definitely the sort of win that the US needed after everything that happened against Sweden. Are they back to normal? I don't know. You have to look at their opponents in this situation. New Zealand are nowhere near the quality that a team like Sweden are. They have barely played in the last year or so. So I think if the US got anything other than this 6-1 result, that's when the questions would have been happening and you take into account as well there was two own goals in that and New Zealand actually managed to score a goal of their own so I do still think there are some questions around this team I don't think they are fully settled in the way that we are so used to seeing this U.S. team perform but I mean U.S. fans will be so happy to see the names that are on the score sheet I mean Alex Morgan, Rose Lavelle, Lindsay Hort like it was just so great to see those players and especially someone like Alex Morgan who's like worked so hard to get to this point and has always said that this Olympics was something that she wanted to strive to get to um I think that there's still going to be some questions but they talked a lot during the week about mentality going into this game after the Sweden match uh Haram was talking about the fact that she just didn't think they had the mentality they and I don't know was she saying that they were blasé going into it or did they lose their focus but I immediately after that Sweden result, the first thing I thought in my head was poor New Zealand, because this is the sort of team that is going to like go through a result like that and then completely switch tack and just like fire. And that's what they did. Um, I think US fans will still be looking for a bit more calmness around the team and maybe a bit less panic. But maybe this is just a situation where we see the US team grow into the competition rather than firing on all cylinders from the very start. And just looking back on that Sweden um, win, it's not so much shocking that the U.S. lost to Sweden. We know the great rivalry between both of them. We know they know each other very well. And Sweden is a powerhouse in women's football. But it's how the U.S. lost to Sweden. And like you said, that still um, hasn't gone away. There's still a number of questions. So which questions do you want to see answered? Do you think that they will be addressing before the next round and probably getting into the quarterfinals and beyond? I think this team needs to know how to come from behind when they do they're so used to winning like I mean a 44 game unbeaten streak that's an incredible record but I'm not entirely sure if they know what to do when they're the person that's on the on the rings and they don't know where they're going to find their next goal from I think that in some of the warm-up games even prior to the Olympics they were on shaky ground you know there was some games where they were only just kind of sliding past. I think they played Sweden earlier on in the year and it was a dodgy Megan Rapino penalty and that's how they got the draw. So I want to see that they are actually able to be the incredible winners that they are, but that they know how to get themselves back into a game, that they have the strength of mind, to, back to that sort of mentality, that character to not get frustrated with each other, to be able, and I suppose that's as much on Andonovsky as well, to be able to like pull his team in and say, pull his leaders aside and say right you guys need to bring this team together we are out there because it looked they looked so disjointed when they played Sweden and we didn't see that today they looked a much more cohesive unit but at the same time they weren't playing against the sort of opposition that they had been the last week so I would like to see that answered and I suppose just that they are putting that work in to not think that they are they are an incredible team but I think they probably need to realize that there are quite a few incredible teams in this competition. I mean, the matches today were just so fun to watch. There was goals galore. Every time I looked at one match, there was more goals having turned to another match, there was more goals. So I think just like for them realizing that, yes, they're the powerhouses in international football, but that power is shifting a lot at the moment. And what, what do they want their position to be in the whole thing? And then speaking on Sweden now, they were also in action today against the Matildas of Australia. 4-2 win for Sweden, but it was Sweden that actually had to come from behind. Australia absolutely pressing them to that one. It almost looked like the Aussies were going to be the ones to win this one, Kathleen. Um, and then it just made you think, how on earth did the USA get battered by this Swedish team? It really did. And I wonder, in some sense, did Sweden suffer from a bit of a hangover from that US game? Because they had their tactical approach down. They knew who they were targeting. They knew exactly how to 
outplay the US and make them frustrated. Whereas you didn't see as much of that in the first half, especially against Australia. You know, everyone knows looking at Australia, Sam Kerr is their legend. She is their talent. And that has really, they've really struggled with that in the matches before the Olympics because everyone just marks her out of the game and Australia have had to kind of switch from being a very attacking side to a much more defensive side and getting those counter attacks were important but for some reason today Sweden just seemed to let Sankar off I mean she got two goals she could have had another penalty she did have a penalty which she missed um, and I'm sure she was having some flashbacks back to the quarterfinals of the Women's World Cup where she also had that very crucial miss because that was the moment that Australia stopped playing after that and that was when Sweden really got their foothold in the game so I think it's interesting I, after the Sweden match, even though this is like the, it's the group that everyone's like, this is probably the most competitive group. I think there was still an assumption that it would be Sweden in the U S mm. kind of discounting Australia and the whole thing, which is unfair because they actually played incredibly well for large parts of that game and did have Sweden under pressure. And um, I think that again, much of it might go into the mentality of the teams more than the actual play. I think Sweden set up really well against the US. The US didn't expect it. Australia set up really well against Sweden. Sweden maybe didn't expect it either. So it's it's intriguing to watch this group play out. It's probably one of been one of my favorite ones to watch so far. Well, elsewhere, Team GB were also in action against the host nation of Japan. Um, it was a 1-0 win for Team GB. Definitely not many goals in that one. And it was a late goal indeed from who else but Ellen White. She scored, she scored all of their goals so far <laughs> in this Olympic tournament. She definitely loves finding the back of the net. Before we get into her performances, um, just Team GB, we, we know up against Japan, they did have the more favorable record. But like I said, left it until very late, very cagey first half. Um, Thoughts on that one in a match that I suppose many expected Team GB to kind of go at it a bit more? Yeah, I think it was interesting. I think Hedri's very much set up the team knowing that Japan are a very technical side. You know, she swapped out players like Millie Bright for someone like Leah Williamson, who is very comfortable on the ball. But Japan just didn't give them any space. They were forcing them to play very narrow. And then when they were getting wide, they were using that opportunity to attack themselves. I think that... I mean, GB are through to the next round and that will probably be where we actually see what they're capable of. But there's just always been a massive question mark over this team because they probably should have scored a few more goals. And as incredible as Ellen White is, there are other incredible players in that team who should be scoring and not just reliant on her for the whole thing. You know, the likes of Nikita Paris, who just made a massive move from Lyon to Arsenal. Um, so I think they're... This Team GB has a bit of a monster on its back and it needs to answer some questions. And I think it's also it's left because most of the team is English. It's left over from like World Cups with that squad as well. And I'm I don't know if we've seen the true side of this team yet. I can't really work out what they're doing, but it's very clear that Reese has them doing some really interesting tactical stuff. You know, you watch their set pieces and it's so clear that they have been drilling those and doing training ground versions on the pitch and it doesn't always work out but you feel like if they do get that sort of thing to click that could be a really dangerous asset for them in the rest of the competition well thank you very much for watching espn on youtube for more sports highlights and analysis be sure to download the espn app and for live streaming premium content and let's not forget as well espn fc seven days a week subscribe to espn plus